What's up, Mini Truckers? Ben here, the US Mini Trucks. That's my new Aluma trailer. We're using it for rafting. I was just gonna do a walk around in my old uh, Aluma trailer. This is my fourth Aluma trailer. Actually, I only ever owned Aluma. I had a 6812, which is a 12 footer. And then I had an enclosed Aluma that I was using for my son's go karting. And then I sold the smaller one so I could get two mini trucks on here. So this is called a 7820R. And the R is for the ramps. And the 78 is 78 inches from the inside to the inside. I measured it's 81 inches from fender to fender. And then it's 20 feet long. So the mini trucks are 10 and a half uh, feet each which you would say is 21 feet and what happens I just have like a little bit of overhang like here and then a little bit of overhang in the back and then you know a little gap so I'll kind of do probably a walk around and then some of the pros and cons that I like about it but overall in pretty good condition you've got uh, three stake pockets on each side so there's one two and three and I've tied down from there and then I've also tied using these you know wrap it around that's really strong it was supposed to have removable fenders so if you had like a, something really wide the thing I this is like a nut in there and then in the back this one broke so to make it removable it's not like you can just use your hands without fingers and then I put these aluminum spacers in there it came with 14 inch tires and i was getting problems i'll show you in the back with the ground clearance side so these are 15 same width and then i just bumped the fenders up a little to give you a little more clearance in there um you've got these you can put these down for when you're loading and not connected and then you just want to put the pin back in but it keeps the ramp from flipping up and so we'll put that back in there let's see how we can get that in we might do that later another stake pocket so pretty low profile with the ramps you got them connected in there with a pin and then they just slide out this is like a black plastic piece and on this side I'm not sure but it's missing so mm, that you could just get another plastic piece I, these were actually loose at one point and I glued them all back down once I realized this fell off I've got all the LED lights and then tons of reflectors I put all the reflectors on they get sun faded but these ones are brand new these are the old ones. It's kind of hard to take the old ones off. So yeah, one of the things I don't like is just the way they put the license plate. So you got, this is like a hand width. So maybe you got eight inches. And then it's just on here with like a little aluminum tab. So to make it even more ground clearance, I folded my license plate and then stuck it on. And then I just attached it with zip ties so it don't damage it too much. I've seen before people put them like on that fender. That could be an option. You've got these really nice stainless steel tie downs. They just flip up and then you tie them off of there. And those are all in really good shape. Deck's really good. I think there's a couple scrapes. Kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can... There's really nothing major, but... Mostly from like where straps were dragging or I'm not sure what. Let me see. And the front tie down. So it's nice to have the flexibility of all the tie downs. And then what I've done is like take a, you know, a fabric loop and put it here. And then you could even hook off of here and make like infinite tie downs or attach it to there. So that's good. This fender's in good shape. Again, it's just missing those uh, black handles. These have got the Easy Lube hub, so you could take these off and then put uh, grease in them. I've had two, and both of my Luma trailers 
leaked the grease through the seal even with brand new seals so i just manually pack the bearings now and these i've done at least two times and when i replaced did it the first time i replaced the bearings all the races and all the seals so that's that um let's see what else we can crawl underneath uh one of the things kind of this cap i used to have a cap on it i'm not sure where it went but i do cut down an aluminum can and then i siliconed it to the top so that there's gears in here and you don't want them you know getting getting all nasty so this is what makes it go up and down it looks like maybe 800 pounds or 1500 i think it's we'd have to double check i think it's 1500 it's rated that's fine so you got the connection here i've got a lock on there but it's a two and five sixteenths ball and then i've had this is not required in all the states but this is called a breakaway controller and so what would happen like if your pitch came out of your car you're supposed to attach this to a, a separate spot and that way if the hitch falls apart this thing's gonna pull out Ugh. it's a lot of force and then now the brakes are activated so you don't want to test that when it's connected because it's sending 12 volts out right now and you could blow a fuse in your tow vehicle and then one thing i found uh when you test it if you try to test it with the thing out it doesn't read properly so i've replaced this whole battery box the old one like i had replaced the battery and then the top part kind of get corroded even this you can see they don't do that good in the sun looks like this piece is a little bit floppy but it kind of tells you how to do it and we rewired it this thing the little sheath kind of breaking down uh you got the connector there we've they built up the weld here and on that side i had a small crack in this weld here and if you notice like this piece is not even really structural the way they do it i'm pretty sure it's just to be able to mount accessories so they got a couple welds there and then they welded it here but this one was fine it was just the dude i took it to it was like oh let me build it up on the other side and then early on if you read about the alumas they they put these gussets here to kind of build up the strength here's a little bit of the data and then there's some of the weight so this one rated for 56 50 and we've got the tires and the pressure so all aluminum the axles are steel these are torsion axles so you get kind of a rubber independent suspension and i've put all brand new brakes and these are like the auto adjusting brakes so the idea is that there's like a spring inside and it'll keep up you know keep applying tension as the brake pads wear but yeah once i got grease in there i had to replace all the drums and then all the brake pads so it was freaking a lot of work and a lot of expense but this has probably been like two or three before I moved to Colorado, which is two years ago. And I think that's it. Write down in the comments if you have any questions. You can put aluminum cleaner. I've used it a couple times, but that's kind of what these streaks are from, where it's like a etching type cleaner. Oh, looks like I got a little bit of, let me zoom in on that, a little bit of damage. This is where like the mini trucks we're banging on there. I actually thought to put like a rubber piece here, but I never got around to it. Let me see. And then I guess I'll pull out one of those ramps. They're five foot ramps and aluminum ramps. Still pretty heavy though, but they're freaking really strong. I've seen some other of those cheap ramps like you see at Harbor Freight and stuff. And these can carry you know, the trailer's rated for 5,000, so I'm gonna have to set this down and pull it out. 
me see. And then that's what this channel is for. So on the end of the ramp, there's like a, see, I set this down. So you got like a little lip here and then it would go down and that way it keeps it from forward and going forward and back. So I really love the thing. The things I just didn't like is just the ground clearance issue. Even with the new tires, I was still, you know, coming out of like a gas station where they get the big dips. I would kind of drag that, uh, the uh, license plate. But other than that, got the safety chains. Everything's perfect, 100% functional. Brakes work, all the lights work. And ready to go to a new home. A little bit narrow for cars. I, I've only ever carried the mini trucks. And then one time I tried to throw my Corolla on there. I thought I was going to be smart and take it to discount tire. And then, you know, a car is pretty wide. So if you're wanting to do like full size vehicles, it has a little limitation. And then if you were wanting to use it for like pallet work, because it has these rails, you can't really get a, you know, front end load or like a forklift on there, except from the back. So something like that, you'd want like a real true flatbed. I like this idea because it keeps the stuff a little more contained. You know, I've put long pieces of wood where it was like a 20 feet piece of two by four. We actually use it for siding, like hardy siding. And that worked pretty good right there. Just pushing it against the side and then kind of strapping it. So, but most of the time it was being used for the mini trucks. All right, hopefully that helps. Let me know what you think. And this would go down. It's just I didn't have any room right there. All right. Take it easy. Stay mini. Peace.